Hi my friends, so by the title of this video, you already know what I'm talking about. I did feel like I was rambling on a lot. I feel like I do that all the time. And also the lighting was completely off. I apologize where my vanity is. I usually have really good lighting, but for some reason today it was just horrible. So hopefully the video is not too bad and we kind of get across what I wanted to get across. Overall, I love my makeup. This is really hard for me to film and I didn't realize it was going to be this hard to film until I started uh, filming it. This is in no way or form trying to bash someone. Again, this is my experience, how I felt, why I left my job. And ultimately, I'm happy. I'm at a good place right now. Uh, maybe not exactly where I want to be, but mentally, and that's for me the most important thing. I hope that you're able to relate. And if you have any story to tell, definitely let me know. I'd love to hear your story. And I hope that you enjoyed today's video of me getting ready and just chit-chatting with you guys. And if you do, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe for more videos to come. So I did my eyebrows already off camera just because I didn't want to take too long on them. I already prepped and primed. And now I am going to go in with my corrector because my under eyes are just not it this is my favorite one i always talk about it on my instagram this is from la girl in case you're wondering why i keep looking this way instead of at the camera it's because i'm just looking to see what i'm doing okay i am going to be using our beauty sponge and if you didn't know me and my friend erica we do have a lash brand together it's like, it's not just lashes that we're trying to, you know, come out with. It's like beauty products and just anything. That's why it's called Anything Beauty. So I'll definitely leave everything in the description in case I don't mention what I'm using. Just know that it'll be down in the description for you guys. Getting started, I haven't done YouTube in so long and I have never actually done a get ready with me. So I'm actually really excited just to talk to you guys. Starting from the beginning. I was actually born in Mexico and I came here to the US when I was two years old. I came with my family. My dad actually brought me and my family to the United States and I've been here since. I have been going to Mexico regularly since I was little. We go, we try to go like once a year if possible. But I know sometimes it's hard, especially with COVID and sometimes like just other things. I know somebody had asked me, how is it that I have dual citizenship? Well, since I was born in Mexico, I automatically have citizenship there. And then here, well, I have met the requirements to be a citizen in the US, which makes me a uh, qualified to be a US citizen which is how I have dual citizenship here in the US and in Mexico. I mean, that's one of the things that I'm really happy that my dad did for us because I love Mexico so much, but it just sucks that no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you work, no más no sales para adelante. And I really do feel like America is the land of the dream. So right now, you guys, I am using Dose of Colors. I'm actually really happy because this morning they gave me my own discount code with dose of colors and i was so happy because i love this brand so much and it's always like such a great feeling to be able to work with companies that you genuinely love and that it's easy for you to talk about because you love them and you use it every single day and if you follow me on instagram you know that i always rave about this foundation i am in the shade 118 for those wondering and i'll leave my discount code right here for you guys i guess i'm gonna start off with how i even got here right so what happened was that i've always loved makeup all of my life i wasn't that good at it though i'm not gonna lie however back in 2012 i had finally graduated high school and i started college i went to Fresno State right out of high school because I used to be an avid and um, 
my teacher, Mr. Fernandez, which he's a great, great teacher, by the way. He told us that we had to go to a four year after. And though I think it's great for a lot of people, it wasn't the best thing for me. But anyways, I'm still happy with the experience. It was great. I feel like I really enjoyed, you know, being at state for a year just to experience it, but it just wasn't for me. So I wanted to be a lawyer by the way, but <laughs> once I did like the first year, I was like, dude, this is real, real hard. At the time, um, my friend then, she on her own had came about a dental assistant program. And I didn't know anything about dentistry. All I had was braces and that was it. Like that's all I knew about dentistry. I never thought like, hey, like I'm, I wanna do dentistry. Never in my whole life did I think about it. So I remember she had told me, hey, like I found this program, it's like really easy. I remember that we had a meeting with my friend's mom and my mom to let her know that I was not gonna go back to state, that I was done with state, and I was gonna go into a dental assistant program. My mom was pissed. She was pissed, she was like, I literally invested so much time and so much money, and now you're telling me that you don't wanna do this, and I told her I just don't wanna be wasting my time. You know, so anyway, she had no other say in my decision. I was 18, even though you know that when you're a Mexican living in a Mexican household, it doesn't matter what age you are. It does not matter at all. Okay, but just considering the fact though that I'm 18, let's just pretend that that matters. So she was like, whatever. So I started doing um, the dental assistant program and i ended up really liking it i actually went to school every single day and i received a 4.0 in perfect attendance and during that time being i got hired off my um, my internship and that was really cool because i was finally getting paid i had never ever worked before that and that was really cool so i finally got to buy my own makeup right so i finally was able to start doing looks i remember like someone that i really looked up to was um beauty by rosita i'll leave her at name here she has a youtube channel and i just loved watching her and i remember she was like one of the first people that i would watch other than like Carly Bible. I remember watching Carly Bible a lot in high school. Anyways, I started, I got my job, my first job ever, and it was great. I, The office that I worked at, honestly, I can say confidently that they taught me everything that I needed to know about dentistry. Like, take my state boards and I passed that. So I was doing that, I was an RDA and everything was fine. And so we were, I was just living my life just you know without social media social media again it wasn't a thing to me like i had it but i was just a viewer there was a time in my job then that one of the dentists was going to retire because it was a family uh, practice so they didn't really need too many people working there anymore just tough time deciding who was gonna leave and i just remember during the time and I'm a really big uh, God believer, by the way. And so whenever tough times are happening, I always refer back just to God. And I just talk to him about things and I just, you know, and he really does talk back to you if you really listen. So there was this book, it's called The Daily Devotions. And I remember I got this book from Costco and I was reading it. And in one of those entries for that day, it just pretty much said, just let go like trust me i got you and so i knew too that even though i had learned so much from my other job like from my past job i learned so much i love them i knew that i wanted to keep a healthy relationship they're still my dentist to this day i knew all that but i also knew that i just needed to do, just expand myself you know that was my first job i've never worked anywhere else and i just knew that it was time so i took that decision to go talk to the dentist and I let him know, hey, like I volunteer to leave. I remember that it was something that definitely helped everybody out. It created less stress. It was just like, wow, like thank you so much, you know, for doing that. And 
I just felt like I did the right thing. That's actually when everything happened. I was off for just a little bit because I kind of started working at my other job right away kind of. And during that time, I just started creating. I started taking pictures, I started taking photos and I started posting them online, not thinking anything of it. I was just having a lot of fun. I don't know how long you guys have been on social media, but during that time, it was different. Social media was so different back then. Like now it's way different. So there was this page called The Brow Game and Kara, which I love, she ran that page and she had posted me on there. And Anastasia followed that page. So Anastasia's page uh, saw my content on hers and then reposted me. I remember that day I woke up with so many notifications going into my job now. When I started, it was really great honestly i thought wow like this is a really great job like i'm glad that i came here it's definitely like a good change for me i'm growing here you know it's good and i really enjoyed it in the beginning but i always knew though from the beginning that i didn't want to be there for the rest of my life so it was something that i knew and it was clear to me that i didn't want to be there forever i knew that have this vein right here by the way it's like right here it's i cannot cover it up it's not even my dark circle at this time it's just like a vein and i have it right here too but it's more visible here pretty much like i want to say like months in i ended up getting a manager she was the best manager ever she was just one of a kind she was a great manager she listened she cared she did for us she advocated for us. She cared about what I had to say. She never made me feel like I was bugging. She was just really great. But then COVID hit. And COVID took a hit on us like hard. When I mean hard, it was hard. We were under so much stress and especially the medical department. It was just crazy. They were expected to deliver more with less people the pressure was just there and it was just too much it was time for us to retire she had already served her time she had already been working at other jobs previously and it was time she deserved it and i was so happy for her i was really sad because i told her wow like we're not gonna be able to replace you like ever like you're not replaceable and i was really really sad but she was like well you know it's time and i'm gonna miss you guys and i told her i'm gonna miss you like so much so then we got new management and it was already going before this new management it was just going rock bottom hill after covid a bunch of positions started becoming um, eliminated a lot of people got laid off people that had been working there for a gazillion years they ended up getting laid off like that was it they haven't been you know that position hasn't been reopened since and i guess i i understand the business part of it whatever but just the point being is that it's safe to say that in a in any almost any job like it doesn't matter you don't matter you know it's just numbers the only thing that matters is numbers. We had a lot of departments, right? A bunch of departments, we had them and departments were doing jobs and stuff. Well, all those jobs started becoming eliminated and they were being handed off to us. So not only were we having to do these jobs on top of ours, but we were expected to have them completed, period, no exceptions, none, okay? Ugh, just thinking about it just gets me so upset and like I didn't even think that I was gonna get emotional <sighs> I'm just so happy I left it wasn't even that because to be honest and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cry but I'm a good ass worker that's the one thing about me that I'm really just my work ethic is just immaculate and i say that with a hundred percent of my being i a hundred percent believe that because my parents uh, i just didn't think that i would be here one day i 
really do not want to cry and I didn't think that I was gonna cry like I never I promise you I did not think that I was gonna cry and I'm crying because I'm really proud of myself that I left that job like I'm really really proud of myself because I was there for five years you guys like five years and during those five years I did so much for that company like so much I really just my department I turned it all around like when I first started oh my gosh it was like chaotic like when all the girls that kept coming in I was training them to the T like I really when I'm at a job, I really do 110%. So everybody that would come in, I would train and I would train them 100%. They would leave to other departments or they would leave to other locations and they would all excel. My concern was always like, having patients have the best care, go above and beyond for our patients. Like they never saw it, people didn't see it. We're getting all these other duties now and our pay is the same, yet we're doing, we're doing call center, we're doing all these enrollment programs. We're doing all these insurance stuff. We're doing so much and we're not getting paid more. Like, what the heck? And we're being told that we have to do it, period. We still have to be with our best attitude even under all this stress. Like, what? I'm not gonna say names and I'm not like, I'm not going to bash anybody or anything. I'm just speaking my experience, how I felt about the situation. Just to be honest, my team when i was there we were the best and i <laughs> i know that's being a bias but we were the best we worked amazingly and even other people that came at the end to cover they were really amazed by us they were like dude you guys got it together you guys are a great team and we knew that ended up getting a, an, another management and by the way we would get managed kind of by two people. It was like the supervisor and the manager. My supervisor was is amazing too. She's she's amazing. If I needed something, she would tell me like I her I love. But then we got another manager and it just it wasn't the same. I wasn't being heard. We weren't being heard. It was tough. Okay, and there was like an incident that had happened to one of my um, coworkers and this incident really put everything into perspective. We're like, like, excuse my language, but we were like WTF. Like this is not how it's supposed to be. Like a manager is supposed to have your back and a manager is supposed to look after you pretty much like we didn't have somebody and it was always just talk it was just like hey i'm here to back you up but in reality we were out there by ourselves it was just like deal with it and that's it just deal with it just deal with it everything was just deal with it like all the time whenever i had a concern i felt like i was bugging when i had something to say i was wrong co-worker she had ended up putting in her two weeks notice that's not my business so that I'm not even going to go into because that's not my business at all. And once she was leaving, I told myself, you know what, like, I don't know, like we're, we were a great team, but now that she's going to be gone, I'm going to be stuck with all the stress. Me and my other coworker, of course, but what I mean is because I had been there the longest, I was going to have to train the new people, right? I was gonna have to train them. And while training, I was still going to have to keep up with everything else. And we're, we see a lot of people there. Like it's a lot of, lot of people that we see there. And so it's really hectic. So I, I told myself, you know what? Like, I don't know. Like my mental health at the time was not already, it was, I was so tired. I was so stressed out. I couldn't do social media. It was crumbling, it was falling apart. Like I just felt like what I really love to do, I'm letting it go because of a job that doesn't even value me, doesn't appreciate me. I'm letting what I really love go for what? So I gave it one last shot. I went in there with the benefit of the doubt and I laid out my concerns and I laid out my expectations 
and oh shoot i was supposed to be using this palette here i was using on the soft glam which i really love but i really want to use this one so anyways he pretty he pretty much told me you know i don't think that's gonna happen however i'll try a week went by i was like whatever maybe he needs a week you know to find an answer during that week never did i see him he would not say hi he would not like hey like just an update nothing another week goes by and no response nothing not even to say you know what nancy like no and these are the reasons nothing at all i just felt like i was being ignored and i know during that time there was a lot going on with the other department with medical i know that i i know that which is why during the first week i was like you know what it's just i'm gonna give it you know time but then time kept passing and i was just like dude time is money you feel me like said my concerns and i never got an answer one day i was just sitting down there i was just sitting sitting there and i and i called my mom up and i told her ama voy a renunciar and she was like renuncia and that's exactly what i needed to hear i just needed one person to believe that i could do it without a stable job that's all i needed i don't know about you guys but for me el apoyo even if i was not going to ask my mom for anything i was not going to be hey, ama, pay pay um for my stuff no she knew that too i just needed somebody to believe in me that's just how i am i'm a libra i'm very indecisive i called my husband he said do it i stood up i went in there and i said I put in my two weeks notice. He said, think about it overnight. Take three days, think about it. Like, nope, I, I'm positive, I'm sure. I'll bring in my letter in tomorrow, I'm done. <sighs> I type in my letter that night. I put it in his desk. I gave a copy to my supervisor, which I love, she was great didn't leave because of her that's it those didn't hear from him during those two weeks the last time that i ever talked to him was my last day people who were covering he wouldn't even come and say hello thank you so much for covering i really appreciate your help if you need anything let me know nothing i did receive a phone call during that time and they had told me that a manager position was gonna be opening up and that they had thought about me i said hell no after they told me like what they expected of me, I said, hell no. I said, no way. And then they said, you know, in order to get to the top, you need to make some sacrifices. And I said, that is exactly why I'm quitting because I know that where I want to be, it's not here. When, where I want to be is somewhere else, not here. And that is why I'm making this sacrifice. They didn't understand that me leaving a stable job where I got my paycheck regularly, that was a sacrifice. That was scary as hell. And it's still scary as hell today. And after I did that, I just felt so good. There was another manager. She was not my manager. She was somebody else's manager. And what she told me, I really appreciate it. She had said, they're taking a loss with you, Nancy. You were a really great asset to to this department and i told her thank you so much she's actually an amazing worker so hearing that from her meant a lot i don't even know why she's still there a company will rather let go of good employees than fix the problems and that's just what it is i know that i'm not going to be missed but they're not going to be missed either and it's funny because there's a lot of like people who work there, who are not good workers. And yet, <laughs> nobody ever tells them anything. It's weird, but it's always like the people who work the hardest that always get the shitty end of the stick all the time. To be honest, I would have probably still been there if my, if my other coworker wouldn't have left. I probably would have still been there. I probably would have still been there if a manager who retired would have still been there. Because, it's not just the company that you work for, the team that you work with matters so much. It's so important. I really didn't leave because I had it better somewhere else or because I had it better not working. No, I didn't leave. It's actually a lo contrario. 
it was a sacrifice that I made. I know that there was a lot of questions asking about like me and my husband. I'm thinking that for that, I should perhaps uh, do more like a tag with him. I'm thinking, I think, or like a different video because I felt like I talked a lot. Here, I'm just putting a little adhesive because I'm gonna put some of this uh, glitter on my lid. Ooh, that's really vibrant. I just dab in it and I feel like this glitter kind of like has an adhesive on its own. It seems like it. So it's pretty good. Just patting it on right here. My other like favorite glitters ever it's this Urban Decay. It's a um, heavy metal eyeliner, but I use it as like a topper. It's um, Midnight Cowboy. It's so good. I'm going to put some on top just so it kind of keeps down that glitter and just adds of a brighter glitter on top, just like this. By the way, I'm not going to lie. This kind of made me a little bit uncomfortable to talk about just because I don't want to seem like I'm like I'm slandering or I'm bashing anybody because that's not what I want to do. It's just simply how I felt about everything. Maybe somebody else saw it differently and somebody else didn't ever see it the way I saw it. And that's just how I felt it. That's how a lot of us felt it. And I don't know, like that's all that I can possibly say about that experience. And I'm glad it's a closed chapter. I'm glad that I'm done with it. Put on a little bit of... Uh, brown high, uh, brown eyeliner just to smudge it out a little bit this is from Laura Mercier so creamy I really do hope that it becomes a better environment for everybody involved that comes on to that practice I really hope that they get listened to that they feel like somebody's there for them and they feel like that somebody's gonna advocate for them and do for them and not do for other departments that have already have their own manager. I feel like every manager should do it for their own team. That's why you're there. Just gonna smoke it out like this. It's gonna flick it a little bit at the end, just for a little small wing. Okay, I went ahead and put some a mascara and did my my under eye. Now I am going to be wearing our lashes in the style reina these are one of my favorite styles though i love them all And then I did use my favorite lash glue, which we also sell online, which is the dual glue, just to brighten up my eyes. And this is from NARS. It's their longwear eyeliner. See, look at that. It's up with the Anastasia. I'm gonna use everything here, their blush as well. For my lips, I'm going to use Dose of Colors Cork Lip Liner. Looks kind of crazy right now. Then we're it down. I'm going to be using a Dose of Colors Matte Liquid Lipstick in the shade On Repeat. Oops like to pat it down like this and per usual I have to personally always use a lip gloss so I am going to use dose of colors can you not just a little bit just in the center and there we have Dad. it I know that I didn't and it really went into detail exactly. I know that I was all over the place, but just going back there was just like emotional for me. And then I know I didn't mention this, but by the way, I was an RDA 
for two years before I got to that job. When I went there, there was no back position, so I did front. The team in itself, they were great. They're great people. They're hardworking. They're an amazing, amazing team. And I'm happy that I was able to work there for those five years that I did, but I'm also happy that I was finally able to leave for myself and to work for myself, to work on myself. Ultimately, I'm happy to be doing me. I'm really proud of myself. And I just cannot wait to see what God has in store for me, whatever it is, whether it's, well, I don't wanna say bad, but you know, sometimes bad is necessary to be able to appreciate all the good. Thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate each one of you guys. Que Dios los bendiga. Hasta la próxima. Bye.